Raggedy Ann and Andy by Johnny Gruel. Illustrated by Johnny Gruel. The Taffy Pole. I know how we can have a whole lot of fun, Raggedy Andy said to the other dolls. Let's have a taffy pole. Do you mean crack the whip, Raggedy Andy? asked the French doll. He means the tug of war, don't you, Raggedy Andy? asked Henny. No, Raggedy Andy replied. I mean a taffy pole. If it's lots of fun, then show us how to play the game, Uncle Clem said. We like to have fun, don't we? And Uncle Clem turned to all the other dolls as he asked the question. It really is not a game, Raggedy Andy explained. You see, it is only a taffy pole. We take sugar and water and butter and a little vinegar and put it all on the stove to cook. When it has cooked until it strings way out when you dip some up in a spoon, or it gets hard when you drop some of it in a cup of water, then it is candy. Then it must be placed on butter plates until it has cooled a little, and then each one takes some of the candy and pulls and pulls until it gets real white. Then it is called taffy. That will be loads of fun. Show us how to begin. Let's have a taffy pull. Come on, everybody, the dolls cried. Just one moment, Raggedy Ann said. She had remained quiet before, for she had been thinking very hard. So hard, in fact, that two stitches had burst in the back of her rag head. The dolls, in their eagerness to have the taffy pull, were dancing about Raggedy Andy. But when Raggedy Ann spoke in her soft, cottony voice, they all quieted down and waited for her to speak again. I was just thinking, Raggedy Ann said, that it would be very nice to have the taffy pull. But suppose some of the folks smell the candy while it is cooking. There is no one at home, Raggedy Andy said. I thought of that, Raggedy Ann. They have all gone over to Cousin Jenny's house and will not be back until the day after tomorrow. I heard Mama tell Marsala. If that is the case, we can have the taffy pull and all the fun that goes with it. Raggedy Ann cried as she started for the nursery door. After her ran all the dollies, their little feet pitter-patting across the floor and down the hall. When they came to the stairway, Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Andy, Uncle Clem, and Henny threw themselves down the stairs, turning over and over as they fell. The other dolls, having china heads, had to be much more careful, so they slid down the banisters or jumped from one stop to another. Raggedy Ann Raggedy Andy, Uncle Clem, and Henny piled in a heap at the bottom of the steps, and by the time they had untangled themselves and helped each other up, the other dolls were down the stairs. To the kitchen they all raced. There they found the fire in the stove still burning. Raggedy Andy brought a small stew kettle, while the others brought the sugar, vinegar, and water, and a large spoon. Raggedy Andy stood upon the stove and watched the candy, dipping into it every once in a while to see if it had cooked long enough, and stirring it with a large spoon. At last, the candy began to string out from the spoon when it was held above the stew kettle, and after trying a few drops in a cup of cold water, Raggedy Andy pronounced it done. Uncle Clem pulled out a large platter from the pantry and Raggedy Ann dipped her rag hand into the butter jar and buttered the platter. The candy, when it was poured into the platter, was a lovely golden color and smelled delicious to the dolls. Henny could not wait until it cooled, so he put one of his chemise skin hands into the hot candy. Of course it did not burn Henny, but when he pulled his hand out again, it was covered with a great ball of candy was strung out all over the kitchen floor and got upon his clothes. Then, too, the candy cooled quickly, and in a very short time, Henny's hand was encased in a hard ball of candy. Henny couldn't wiggle any of his fingers on that hand, 
and he was sorry he had been so hasty. While waiting for the candy to cool, Raggedy Andy said, We must rub butter upon our hands before we pull the candy, or otherwise, it will stick to our hands, as it has done to Henny's hands, and we'll have to wear off. Will this hard ball of candy have to wear off my hand? Henny asked. It is so hard, I cannot wiggle any of my fingers. It will either have to wear off, or you will have to soak your hand in water for a long time, until the candy on it melts, said Raggedy Andy. Dear me, said Henny. Uncle Clem brought the poker then, and asking Henny to put his hand upon the stove leg, he gave the hard candy a few sharp taps with the poker and chipped the candy from Henny's hand. Thank you, Uncle Clem, Henny said as he wiggled his fingers. That feels much better. Raggedy Andy told all the dolls to rub butter upon their hands. The candy is getting cool enough to pull, he said. Then, when all the dolls had their hands nice and buttery, Raggedy Andy cut them each a nice piece of candy and showed them how to pull it. Take it in one hand this way, he said, and pull it in the other hand, like this. When all the dolls were supplied with candy, they sat about and pulled it, watching it grow wider and more silvery the longer they pulled. Then, when the taffy was real white, it began to grow harder and harder, so the smaller dolls could scarcely pull it anymore. When this happened, Raggedy Andy, Raggedy Ann, Uncle Clem, and Henny, who were larger, took the little doll's candy and mixed it with what they had been pulling, until all the taffy was snow white. Then Raggedy Andy pulled it out into a long rope and held it, while Uncle Clem gave the ants a sharp tap with the edge of the spoon. This snipped the taffy into small pieces, just as easily as you might break icicles with a few sharp taps of a stick. The small pieces of white taffy were placed upon the buttered platter again, and the dolls all danced about, singing and laughing, for this had been the most fun they had had for a long, long time. But what shall we do with it? Raggedy Ann asked. Yes, what shall we do with it? Uncle Clem said. We can't let it remain in the platter on the kitchen floor. We must hide it, or do something with it. While we're trying to think of a way to dispose of it, let us wash the stew kettle in the spoon, said Practical Raggedy Ann. That is a very happy thought, Raggedy Ann, said Raggedy Andy, for it will clean the butter and candy from our hands while we are doing it. So the stew kettle was dragged to the sink and filled with water, and the dolls all took turns scrapping the candy from the sides of the kettle and scrubbing the inside with a cloth. When the kettle was nice and clean and had been wiped dry, Raggedy Andy found a roll of waxed paper in the pantry upon one of the shelves. We'll wrap each piece of taffy in a nice little piece of paper, he said. Then we'll find a nice paper bag and put all the pieces inside the bag, and throw it from the upstairs window when someone passes the house, so that someone may have the candy. All the dolls gathered about the platter on the floor, and while Raggedy Andy cut the paper into neat squares, the dolls wrapped the taffy in the papers. Then the taffy was put into a large bag, and with much pulling and tugging, it was finally dragged up into the nursery where a window faced out toward the street. Then, just as a little boy and a little girl, who looked as though they did not ever have much candy, passed the house, the dolls all gave the bag a push and sent it tumbling to the sidewalk. The two children laughed and shouted, Thank you! When they saw that the bag contained candy, and the dolls, peeping from behind the lace curtains, watched the two happy-faced children eating the taffy as they skipped down the street. When the children had passed out of sight, the dolls climbed down from the window. That was lots of fun, said the French doll as she smoothed her skirts and sat down beside Raggedy Andy. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, said Raggedy Andy. 
that when pieces of taffy are wrapped in little pieces of paper, just as we wrap them, they are called kisses. How lovely. I believe Raggedy Andy must have a candy heart too, like Raggedy Ann, said Uncle Clem. No, Raggedy Andy answered. I'm just stuffed with white cotton, and I have no candy heart. But someday perhaps I shall have. A candy heart is very nice, Raggedy Ann said. You know, she had one. But one could be just as nice and happy and full of sunshine without a candy heart.